Planets, stars, galaxies, clusters, space. The universe as we know it is made up of many different things, much of which we may never be able to understand or even see. But is there a limit to our reality? How far does the universe go? Does it even have an end? And if so, could anything exist outside of that? As we're about to find out, the answer to this question isn't straightforward at all. But let's give it our best shot in our video, which seeks to answer what lies beyond the edge of the universe. Starting at number 3. The Reverse Universe Imagine if you were to somehow reach the very edge of the known universe. That's an epic journey of immense proportions for a start. But if you could somehow survive the trip, what would you see? Darkness? Light? Or something else? One recently developed idea seeks to take us back to the beginning of the universe itself to find an answer. The theory, proposed by Dr. Julian Barbour, Dr. Tim Kozlowski, and Dr. Flavio Mercati, claims that when the Big Bang created our universe, we were not an only child. Our universe has a twin, and a rather bizarre one, at that. They claim that if you were to travel to the edge of our universe, you'd actually see our twin universe sat right next to us. And you'd notice it was made from roughly the same amount of matter as our own. It contains stars, planets, gas clouds, and all the other features of our normal, everyday universe. But with one major difference. In this universe, time moves backwards. And bizarrely, if there was someone on the edge of that universe looking into ours, they'd see the same thing. Time would appear to be moving backwards in our universe, even though we're experiencing the opposite. We don't know if you could theoretically travel between these two universes, but you could definitely sit there on the edge of the universe and watch another universe gradually get younger. You could see stars degrade in reverse, planets falling apart, and if you looked close enough, presumably you'd see people slipping back inside their mums. How lovely! So, how plausible is this idea? Well, regardless of which way the arrow of time is moving, whether it's backwards or forwards, the second law of thermodynamics says that entropy or disorder has to increase. This is what our universe did when the Big Bang started. As having begun as a single point with a high amount of order and a low amount of entropy, the bang caused our universe to explode and fall into a chaotic, entropic state. However, this explanation fails to account for the fact that the reversal of time is possible within the laws of physics. So this means that a reverse universe is entirely possible. And it also means that there's something fundamental about the beginning of our universe which we're still yet to understand. Number 2 dark flow. When scientists are attempting to find black holes, they don't do so by looking for them directly, as since they emit no light, this would be impossible. Instead, they detect them by observing their effects on surrounding objects, such as planets and stars. Black holes are so incredibly powerful that they cause hugely noticeable effects on the light we receive from stars light years away. And the reason this is relevant is because we can also use this method to examine the edges of our own universe. However, we might wish we hadn't done that. Because when a group of astronomers began to observe the far-flung reaches of our universe's edge, they noticed that something gargantuan is pulling our entire cosmos all out of shape. Beyond the edge of our universe, something unfathomably huge exists, and we have no idea what it is. Scientists call this force dark flow, and the colored spots on this image show just how much of our universe is affected by this mysterious phenomenon. Some astronomers believe that whatever this force is, 
It may have been created a fraction of a second after the Big Bang. On this subject, NASA researcher Alexander Kozlinski was quoted as saying, We can only say with certainty that somewhere very far away, the world is very different from what we see locally. Whether it is another universe or a different fabric of space-time, we don't know. One theory links this dark flow to our previous entry, the Mirror Universe, and claims that our bratty backward sibling is the one responsible for tugging on our universe's coattails. Another mind-boggling theory says that this dark flow exists because our universe and everything we know resides inside a black hole. But this black hole isn't gigantic, it's just a regular-sized black hole, like the ones inside our own universe. The theory states that every black hole is a universe creator, and inside each is a new reality which appears to outside observers as if it had been shrunk down to a singularity. But for those within, it seems perfectly normal, like a TARDIS, but with better monsters. This theory could explain the origins of the Big Bang, because black holes might be the ones responsible for compacting the universe's matter into a tiny space in the first place. Then, when the amount of matter becomes too much for a black hole to cope with, SHAZAM! The building blocks of stars, planets, and a brand new universe are vomited all over time and space like a greedy fat baby. If true, then our original question becomes somewhat void for it means that the universe has no edge. It is not big, and nor is it small. The universe has no boundaries, but we can never leave. The universe simply exists as one of many, each one suspended inside the impenetrable shroud of a black hole, until it's fit to burst. And number one, the next level. Let's scale back from these grandiose theories and explore a theory that's based on things we know for certain. The things we've seen and measured, i.e. the size of the observable universe. We could start this entry by throwing a huge number at you, but that wouldn't mean much without context. So let's build up nice and gently. Humans, you are on average 1.6 to 1.7 meters tall. Your typical tree is around 10 times that. And the tallest tree in the world is the redwood, at over 100 meters high. The tallest man-made object on Earth is the Burj Khalifa, at 828 meters. And currently under construction is Saudi Arabia's Jeddah Tower, with this building set to be the world's first to go beyond a kilometer in height. But that's nothing compared to Mount Everest, which reaches 8.8 .8 kilometers at its peak. Everest? punctures our Earth's troposphere, which lies 8 to 14 kilometers up. Once you pass the stratosphere and the mesosphere, the thermosphere can be found 85 kilometers up, stretching about 600 kilometers wide. This is the realm of satellites and other such business, including the International Space Station 400 kilometers from Earth. And now we're in space, we should probably haul ass a little. Earth's exosphere is the upper limit of our atmosphere and extends to an altitude of 10,000 kilometers. On its closest orbit, our Moon exists 36 times that distance away from our Earth at 363,000 kilometers. And within this gap, whose distance is roughly equivalent to nine laps of the Earth, you can fit every planet in our solar system with over 8,000 kilometers to spare. There's even room for Pluto, but he's not wearing the right shoes, so he ain't getting in. Next up is our very own solar mistress, the Sun, which is about 150 million kilometers away, with our solar system's farthest planet being Neptune at 4.5 billion kilometers out from the Sun. This gives us a diameter of 9 billion kilometers for all the major objects under the Sun's influence. Or does it? A hypothetical Planet 9 is believed to be on the verge of discovery. With this gargantuan world's orbit, reaching as far as a hundred billion kilometers. The closest star to our own sun is Proxima Centauri, 40 trillion kilometers away, or 400 times the purported distance between Planet 9 and our sun. Both our sun and Proxima Centauri share a galaxy, the Milky Way, 
with between 200 and 400 billion stars, and at least 100 billion planets as well. And to accommodate all this, our galaxy has a diameter of one quintillion kilometers. You could fit around 800 billion suns in there and still have plenty of legroom to spare. 24 quintillion kilometers out, we'll find the next galaxy, Andromeda, with both this and the Milky Way forming part of the local group, which itself measures 62 quintillion kilometers across. Our local group makes up part of a supercluster 1.2 sextillion kilometers wide, and this is but one of many superclusters with the entire realm of the observable universe comprising 860 sextillion kilometers, which is 860 followed by 21 zeros. So, there we have it. This region we call our observable universe is made up of 10 million superclusters and 2 trillion galaxies each, with around 100 billion stars of their very own. Out of all the stars in all the galaxies, 10 trillion are believed to be planetary systems, meaning that we are but one simple world in a cosmic backyard of stupendous proportions. The little dots in this image are our planets. These dots are the stars in our neighborhood. All of those dots make up just one dot in our galaxy, which in turn makes up that big dot in our galactic group. This group is but one of many in the Virgo supercluster, and the Virgo supercluster is just one of many clusters, which can all be seen here, in a space covered by a dot so small, you can barely make it out. Wow, if Carl Sagan's description of the pale blue dot made you feel insignificant, I hate to think what this has done to you. And what's worse is that this is just the beginning. There is not a single piece of evidence to say that the edge of the observable universe is the end of all things. It could quite feasibly be infinite. So who knows? Maybe our entire universe is nothing more than one small dot on an even larger picture. And if so, how high does this scale go?